I hope you all are doing well. I've had a lot going on this past week. Uh, I was able to get a different surgeon, doctor, um, motility doctor, that took my insurance. And uh, I'm sorry I'm driving. I, I just haven't had time to do anything and nobody can bother me right here. So, um, Anyways, I, I went to him the other day, and they were going to do an EGD on the 11th, and that's just an upper endoscopy, you know, where they'll go in and look and take biopsies and stuff like that. From my swallow test, the barium swallow test I did a while ago, um, it shows I have a hiatal hernia, and... Uh, you know, they can see my Neeson is still intact, and that that is a Neeson fundoplication where they take the top part of your stomach and they wrap it around the esophagus to create a flap, so that way nothing comes back up. So for years, I wasn't able to burp or vomit or anything like that. Uh, only over the past few years has it came back. So. You know, it's slipping or getting old, whatever you want to say. Um, wow, people do not know how to drive. Um, so, the problem that I'm having is food getting stuck and choking. And so, it's, it's I don't know what you want, like a paradox. The, the fact that I'm going to have to trade one for the other. I'm either going to keep choking and keep the redo the Neeson or undo the Neeson and let them put my stomach back and I'll be on meds, which I'm on meds anyways for reflux. So it doesn't even matter. But then fix the hiatal hernia to where um, I don't... Uh, choke anymore. So that's what we're looking at doing. And, uh, yeah. So, first the EGD and then they'll schedule the surgery for, for that. And that, that's considered a major surgery. Uh, I don't know if they keep you in the hospital a day or two. Uh, I was in the hospital a few days when they did it the first time. But anyways... <laughs> Uh, that's what's been going on and why I haven't been around much. Uh, I'm going to do my best to try to do a study on 1 Corinthians. Uh, I might be able to get it done tomorrow. And, you know, right now, I, I get some really strange comments. And, you know, it's so funny because it's like people are trying to be righteous in their own mind and they don't even see how they're not even acting in love towards a brother or a sister. That always kind of bothers me. Um, you know, there's different channels that do nothing but bash other watchmen and women and think, I guess they think they're the Holy Grail. I don't know. I don't know how else to, they're very prideful, and that's not good. As children of God, we need to be humble, always, and to be gentle and kind. You know, if you have a disagreement with someone, you can do it in a way that's loving. It doesn't have to be, oh, I'm right, you're wrong, in an argument. It shouldn't be like that at all, you know? We're to, to act in love in all things, in all ways. And yes, it's hard to do that sometimes. You know, we're in this sinful body that likes to react to the world in anger and in hostility. But I'm going to go back on this obedience thing real quick and try not to take up too much of your guys' time. So, when you first hear the gospel, because a lot of people are really confused. Uh, when you first hear the gospel and you believe, you, you, you believe it in your heart. You, you have faith in what you've never seen before. You know, but you believe Jesus was fully flesh and fully human. He, he died on the cross. 
cross for all of our sins and he was dead and buried and he rose again from the grave three days later now for some people that's that's hard to even imagine you know but it's our faith you know faith is is unseen in believing in Jesus and the fact that he did this bared all of our iniquities to save us so uh, one day soon we'll be with him again so what happens when you believe that you confess that you're a sinner in need of a savior and you believe in Jesus okay and the Holy Spirit indwells in you and starts a mighty work in you, starts changing your mind, starts changing your thoughts, starts, you know, filling you with love and love for others and the desire to share this free gift with everyone. I mean, that, that, that should be your burning desire is to save, you know, or reach out to as many people as you can to be saved. You know, tell them about Jesus. Lead them. Um, I'm sorry if my words are coming out badly. I'm sorry. But you, you all know what I'm trying to say. You know, we, we're supposed to share Jesus with everyone. Um, it's a big deal. After, you know, the Holy Spirit dwells in you, you're not going to have the desire to live in a sinful way. There's people out there for some reason saying that you, your faith saves you alone and you can go on and keep doing what you're doing. But it says in the Bible, if you deliberately and willingly sin, there's nothing left for atonement. So... If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're not going to have that desire. You're going to have a desire to walk away, a desire to be obedient, to love God's word, to love his commandments. I mean, that's the hard truth. You change your whole life. And this is why I always say, you know, start with the greatest commandment. That's loving God with all of your heart, mind, and soul strength in the second loving your neighbor as thyself when you start here you're going to do everything to you know hear the hard truth to become disciplined um, to you know fulfill the great commission you're going to do all of those things for the love of Christ and that's how that's just the way it is um you know, I'm not trying to say who is saved and who is not. I'm just saying it's evident in their life. Are they acting in love? Are they are they sharing the gospel? You know? Or are they going to church on Sunday after drinking all night the day night before, you know, and then go to work and, you know, just be angry all week and, you know, not do anything to lead people to Jesus or to show God that I want to obey you because you loved me first, you know, you saved me, you know, it, it should all be that way, anyway, that's really all I wanted to share for the moment and give you guys an update, I so appreciate so appreciate you guys that have helped me and Charlie. Um, you know, I never thought I'd be in this position. You know, I've, I've worked my whole life, so this whole thing has really changed my perspective on a lot of things and uh, it really makes you humble. But, anyways, I pray this video was uh, not too noisy from the dri driving. And I, I just pray it blesses you. Share the gospel. Share, um, share love. Share Jesus. Thanks, guys. I love you all. Be blessed. Bye.